I was swaying to the music with the hottest girl at school in my arms. Everything was perfect when suddenly I saw a flurry of red storming toward me and then the next thing I knew, I was being slapped across the face. Ugh, it was my ex, Rosie. She was looking at me as if she wanted to snap me in half. Okay, so Rosie and me had only broken up yesterday. But that didn't mean she had the right to go full psycho on me. Hey, so I'm Andrew and I like to think I'm a pretty smart guy. The problem is, I'm a sucker for hot girls. I tend to be blinded by their beauty. The result being, I don't always make the best decisions around them. But I had no idea what drama my weakness for a pretty girl was about to get me into. So it all began with the end of term college party. Me and my friends went heavy on the drinks. So when my friend Brad bet me a burger that I wouldn't go and ask Lisa to dance, well, I didn't hesitate in approaching her. Jeez, she's so hot and way out of my league. So I was expecting her to tell me to go away, but instead she smiled and let me lead her over to the dance floor. While we were dancing, she whispered in my ear that she'd always like me. Then, yep, you guessed it, Rosie, my crazy ex, stormed over and slapped me. I woke up the next morning with a pounding headache. Ugh, what was all that shouting coming from outside my open window? I wrapped my bed cover around me and shuffled my way over there to take a look. Huh, Lisa and Rosie were yelling at each other. He's mine, not yours. Stay away. He wants me, not you. Deal with it. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe we should ask Andrew who he prefers. What's the point? As we both know, he'll pick me. I was far too hungover for this, so I closed the window and went back to bed. These girls, uh, they wouldn't stop. For the next few days, they bombarded me with messages and waited for me outside my house. Okay, so most guys dream of two hot girls fighting over them, but trust me, watching them pull each other's hair extensions out isn't as glamorous as it sounds. Thankfully, my prayers were answered by none other than Richie, my awesome brother. He showed up with a ticket for a luxury two-week cruise trip. He'd booked it ages ago, but then a work thing came up, so the ticket was all mine. Hell yeah! I hugged my brother, grabbed the ticket out of his hand, and started packing. The tricky part was sneaking past Rosie and Lisa who were still lingering about outside. So I borrowed my housemate's hoodie and baseball cap and pretended to be him to get past them. Result? They didn't even double look at me. Goodbye to my Lisa and Rosie nightmare and hello to the vacation of my dreams. Ah, this is the life. Trust my brother to book such a lavish place. My room was huge and it had my very own balcony. There was so much to do here, from the outdoor bar, dozens of restaurants, swimming pool, cinema... I was on my own floating complex. Heaven! The next morning when I woke up in my king-size bed, I took in the sounds of silence. Yep, oh sweet silence, how I've missed you. This was a no-girl arguing zone. (laughs) I got changed and walked over to the outdoor bar. It definitely wasn't too early for a cocktail. I had a pair of shades on, and that's when I spotted her. Whoa, she was beautiful. I quickly ordered two cocktails and began walking toward her. I was about to hand her the drink when I tripped over a sun lounger, and in slow motion, I watched the cup fall. I desperately tried to grab it, but nope. Instead, I managed to knock into her back. She let out a yelp and then yelled out, You pervert! What do you think you're playing at? I stood there open-mouthed, contemplating if I should dive into the pool to escape this drama or not. Then I looked down at my sunglasses, which in all the action had fallen off. Suddenly, an idea came to me. So I bent down, stretched out my arms, and pretended to fumble around for them. She looked at me for a while, then picked my sunglasses up, placed them in my hand, then said, Oh, I'm sorry, I I didn't realize. Here, let me help you. Then she took my arm and guided me across the pool area. I thanked her. And then, with my trusty shades on, I watched her walk away. So she thought I was blind. Yep, this wasn't my greatest idea, but it got me out of a sticky situation with a hot girl, at least. Later that night, I went to the buffet restaurant for dinner. I was stacking my plate when I bumped straight into someone and almost dropped my plate. Ugh, it was that odd girl again. I quickly put my shades on, then deliberately turned the wrong way and loudly said, Oh, I'm sorry. She put her hand on my shoulder and guided me so I was facing her, then said, "Yeah, It's me, the girl from the pool. And it's okay, I should have been looking where I was going. Um, do you need any help? I quickly cut her off. No thanks, it's okay. Then I lifted my plate up to my nose and sniffed it. Mmm, these prawns sure smell good. She raised an eyebrow at my food-smelling talent, so I carried on pretending to sniff the food as I put it on my plate. And you know what? She wouldn't quit staring at me. Eventually, she walked off. Phew, what a narrow escape. Afterward, I went to the top-deck bar to chill out. 
with yet another cocktail, then who should walk over but, yup, you guessed it, the hot girl. I immediately looked away from her, but what's this? She walked over to me and sat down opposite me. Hey, do you remember me? She asked. Seeing my chance to flirt with her, I replied. Oh, yes, how could I forget someone as beautiful as you are? Huh? How do you know that I'm beautiful? Damn it, I needed to think before I spoke. Ah, well, it's your voice. A sweet voice like yours can only belong to a beautiful girl. Crisis averted. As after that, we started chatting and oh boy, oh boy, she's a sweetheart. Do you know that she's an activist for an organization that works hard to guarantee the rights of baby girls born in Africa? I know, amazing. The evening came to an end and she said, Oh, my name's Bella, by the way. I replied, Bella, a name as beautiful as your soul. Mine's Andrew. She gave me a nervous giggle. Well, Andrew, <laughs> it's getting late, so I suppose I better get back to my cabin. I didn't want the night to ever end, so I blurted out, Whoa, Bella, look at the sky. Isn't it so stunning? She glared at me and then replied, How would you know that? Oops, of course, I was meant to be blind. Um, uh, I can feel it from the breeze. She gave me a quizzing look, then said, Right, well, good night. How about we meet at the arcade tomorrow, let's say 10 a.m.? I excitedly agreed, then she left. Another close escape. I really needed to be more careful. Bella, Bella, Bella. I couldn't stop thinking of her. The next day, I'm such a kid when it comes to arcades, I can't help it. My inner child comes out and, ooh, a car racing game. Nope, I was pretending to be blind. So I awkwardly lingered in the foyer and waited for Bella to show up. When she did, she took my arm and guided me through the arcade. She described all the different games machines to me, which I thought was really sweet. Then she led me over to the plushy grabber machine and squealed excitedly. Hoo-hoo, I loved these as a kid. Soon I was fumbling about to slot my money in, adamant I was going to win her a plushie. But wait, uh, I was meant to be blind. So I touched the controls, then closed my eyes. Her laughter said it all. Massive fail. It was all going to be okay, until Bella had to use the restroom, and instructed me to stay put and wait for her by a shooting game machine. Which so happened to be my all-time favorite arcade game. I rushed over to it as soon as she was out of sight, grabbed a gun, and shot five cans in a row. Then I jumped up and down and whooped in the air. I turned around and saw Bella frowning at me. Oh boy, busted. I tried to explain, but she just shook her head and said, How could you? You're a coward, a pervert, and a liar. Then she ran off. I felt terrible. I tried searching the ship for her, but I couldn't find her anywhere. Feeling bummed out, I ordered a cocktail, then went for a walk across the deck. Suddenly, I heard shouting coming from below me. Huh? What was that? I peered down and saw a man and a woman trying to drag a little girl into one of the safety rafts. Hang on, they weren't alone. Bella was there too. She was trying to pull the little girl away from them. Without even thinking, I dropped my drink and ran over to them. I charged towards the woman and knocked her so hard she almost fell into the sea. The man reached out to steady her, which gave Bella a chance to pick up the kid. Then she grabbed my arm and pulled me away. After that, the bad guys jumped into the raft and sailed away. We returned the girl to her parents. It turns out Bella was on her way to her cabin when she saw a couple in tears as they couldn't find their daughter. So she went looking for her and walked in on the kidnapping. After that, Bella forgave me. Well, I did save the day and all. And we spent the rest of the trip together. Then on our last day, I got down on one knee and asked her to be my girlfriend. And she said yes. I took her back home with me. And as we walked over to my house, Lisa and Rosie ran towards me and started arguing with each other about who I liked more. Oh shoot, I'd forgotten about them. Reading the situation, Bella approached them. Thank God you're here. I assume one of you is his girlfriend, right? There was an accident, and Andrew's blind now, and he really needs someone by his side 24-7. Hearing that, I quickly coordinated with her by waving my arms wildly about. So, which one is your girlfriend, Andy? Uh, it's Lisa. Rosie quickly chimed in. No, uh, he's all yours. We only hung out once. Ha, <laughs> what suckers. I watched them run away. Then Bella and I burst out laughing. After that, I held my arm out to her and let her guide me home, you know, for old time's sake.